Good morning, it's Tuesday, and I'm Pastor Pappy. I've had some special time with Jesus this summer, and I'm looking forward to all that he has to show us in the weeks to come. What we're going to talk about today will inspire you to live for God like never before. We'll look at what God wants us to know and what God wants us to believe about him, and you will build a foundation for your faith based on God's word, the Bible. Today, we're going to find out more about the Bible and how we can know for sure that it's from God. Here's mine. God gave us the Bible to show us what to believe and how to live. Today's faith fact is the Bible is God's word and his plan for me. I'll start the faith fact by saying we believe that and then you finish with the faith fact with me. Let's try it. We believe that the Bible is God's word and his plan for me. Excellent. Here comes Hank and his assistant, Jeremy. Hey everyone, my name is Jeremy and today I want to talk to you about how the Bible is God's word and his plan for me. Wait! What's happening? Oh, and uh, this is Hank. He's my... Uh, the old guy is my assistant. Not exactly. Today I want to talk to you about the Bible. That's right. Gramps here is going to read you the entire thing. If he can still remember how to read. No, no, we're not going to read to you the entire Bible. Oh, good. You get real boring real fast. No, we're going to explain to them how the Bible is inspired. That's right. You know how milk starts to taste weird when it gets old? What are you talking about? You said the Bible was expired, so I'm explaining expiration. No, I didn't say it was expired. I said it was inspired. Pretty sure you said expired. Can we rewind the tape? See, I told you you said inspired. What? No, no. You know what? It doesn't matter. The Bible is the inspired word of God. Question. Yes. What does inspired mean? Well, it means that God is the one who led people to write down his message. Oh, kind of like how this video was my idea. Um. Oh, or how you saw that kid eating a watermelon and you got inspired to get a watermelon smoothie. Yeah, actually. And then another one, and another one, and another one. Okay, I think we're getting off topic here. When you think of inspired, think about a trumpet. Where did you get that? I had it lying around. You never know when you might need a trumpet. Okay, well, just like when you blow into a trumpet, it, it makes a song. It's like God breathed into the authors who wrote his word. Speaking of breath, I think you need a mint. Your breath stinks. Okay, back to the Bible, Hank. God gave us the Bible and it shows us how to live. It's kind of like our roadmap for our life. And at the end of the road is a giant cactus. No, 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 there's no giant cactus anywhere. Throughout the Bible, God speaks to his people. Sometimes he uses a megaphone, sometimes he uses a microphone. No, God does not use a microphone. Is it because the megaphone works so well? No, no. I found that an amazing way to hear from God is to read his word. God loves us, and he constantly says that over and over throughout the Bible. And I constantly fall asleep when you talk. Okay, so just to recap, God's word is inspired. Not expired. And it shows us how to live. And how to find a giant cactus. Are you serious? Yes. God's word truly is life changing. And if you dive into it, I promise it will change yours too. Hey, where are you going? Why'd you leave me here? Jeremy had a lot to say about God's word, how it's inspired. I hope you didn't let Hank confuse you. It's amazing how God can show us his plan for our lives through his word. Today, we're gonna look at how God did that for Moses and the Israelites. God's people, the Israelites, they were slaves in the country of Egypt. And they were treated terribly, and they couldn't escape. 
Then God sent Moses to help the Israelites get out of Egypt. They started traveling to the special land that God had promised to give them. And because the Israelites were God's people, they needed to learn how to live the way that God wanted them to. God sent them a special message to share his plan for them. Exodus chapter 19 shows us that God wants to connect with his people. Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. God truly wanted to connect with his people. They had seen him part the Red Sea so that they could walk through on dry ground. Now God wanted them to be his treasure among all the people of the earth. That made the people happy, and they promised to obey God and his word. Here's the incredible part. God told Moses to get everyone ready because he was about to do something amazing. Moses led the people to a special mountain, and they were going there to be in God's presence. The mountain shook because God was there. Then Moses spoke, and God answered, and his voice sounded like thunder. They were in the presence of the one and only powerful God. He didn't do this to scare them. God wanted them to know that he could be close to them, so he connected with them, and then he gave them this special message. Let's find out what God said. Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness or anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. God's word gives his plan for us. Now, I only read a small part of God's instructions that we commonly call the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments not only help the Israelites to know how to live for God, but they can help you and me know how to live for God. It'd be impossible to remember everything God says and never forget it. And God knows that. So he had the perfect solution. Let me jump to Exodus chapter 32. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets that were written on both sides, on the front and on the back they were written. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, engraved on the tablets. God shows us the best way to live. God wanted his people to remember his words of instruction, so he made sure his words were written down. God gave these rules to live by on stone tablets so that they could be remembered forever. We know what these words were because people wrote them down for us. God inspired Moses and around 40 other people to write his message for us in the Bible. Now we don't have to wonder how God wants us to live. We just need to read it in his word and live how he tells us to. That's why we believe that the Bible is God's word and his plan for me. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and for wanting to be close to us. We want to hear your voice and follow you with our whole heart. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll see you next Tuesday.